Hey guys, Kevin here with the Honey Badger. So it is time we start the seasonal refresh of HB's race motor. So um, we have about 42 and a half hours on the motor. You know, the average uh, recommended refresh is 40-ish hours per Ford for the for, you know for their race motors. This engine is built uh, a little bit more extreme than that. So I think you know pushing it a little longer would be totally fine. The wear indicators on our oil analysis all look good too, but. Uh, we, you know, we got two weeks now, or two months, sorry, between events now, and the it is burning some oil that's leaking down through the valve seals, which I've already diagnosed. I'll throw a picture up on the screen, but it's very clear. I mean, you see oil sitting on top of the valve seals. Um, I don't know whether the valve seals were replaced or not when the heads were done, or if I just somehow got unlucky and it wore through that, you know, it wore out those seals that quickly. But either way, uh, we got to get in there and replace the valve seals, and I'm going to do some other things like timing chains and all that kind of stuff. But before we go ahead and do all that kind of stuff, I'm going to run some tests here just to once again check the health of the engine. Um, due to some uh, weird engine coolant temps that, you know, those that have been happening, um, I just want to make sure that nothing changed between my last oil analysis and, you know, the one that's going to be going out out of the, the oil that I'm going to pull out of the motor today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a leak down test, a compression test, check out the spark plugs, all that kind of stuff. And once those, you know, once we get all that stuff done, uh, then we'll drop the engine out of the car, put it on a stand, take it apart, and kind of see how things look. And, you know, if everything looks great, and the only thing we, we know that we need to do are the valve seals, you know, I'll pull the heads off, um, we'll be doing that, but, uh, you know, I'll replace the valve seals, um, the timing chains, and the tensioners, and all that kind of good stuff, and we'll slap it all back together. If things, unfortunately, look worse than that, or there are, you know, indicators that, you know, it is wearing harder than I expected, obviously, we'll approach that when we need to, and see what we have to do. All right, so let's get started. All right, so number one for me, uh, the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pull all the spark plugs out. This will one, give us a, a nice little, uh, we'll be able to look th look at the spark plugs and see how the cylinders were going. Um, if I remember right, it was, uh, I think it was six, number six, and number two over there. Um, if you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is how I told the Voodoo is done, but you know, two and six, those were the two that had the most oil, so I expect those to be fairly black. But um, these spark plugs were replaced right before the last event at Coda, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. So this should give us a good indicator of how the motor wore. We put about seven hours on it at Coda, so it should really give us a, a, a really good insight into how, um, how the engine was running. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out right now. Uh, we'll take a look at them, and then after that, we'll go ahead and do a compression test, and then after that, we'll do a leak down test. All right, guys, so go, I'm ready to do the compression test now. So if you've never um, done a compression test on this motor, what you wanna do is you wanna pull uh, the fuses here for uh, the fuel pumps. If you're doing this the standard way where you turn the key or in this case, push the button, um, this is definitely important. If you're doing it the way I'm doing it right now, it's less important, but I still recommend it. But pull f uh, fuses 48 and 49 here. Uh, those are for your fuel pumps. And then you want to pull this relay. It's number 81. It's the front down here um, to the right. And then you can just take a jumper here and jumper the two first contacts here. And it'll turn the it'll turn the motor over without you needing to use the key or turn any other part of the car on. All right, so it looks like we're just below 270 on that one. Okay. So number three. Right around that 240. Right around that 240, 245-ish again. So one of the things that uh, will affect your compression test here is if you have, um, so if you, if you have, I should say, if you have low uh, compression and you put oil inside the cylinder, um, it l typically boosts your compression back up because it lubricates the rings around the piston. Uh, that is the cylinder that's leaking the most oil past the valve seal, so it's possible the reason that one has a higher rating is because of the oil that's in there. Is I should say, because of the oil that is likely in there. 
So I'm going to run it again just to see, get another uh, look at it. And then I'm going to run that other one in the back that was low. Yeah, see, it's still running high. It's, you know, it's 270. It's quite a bit higher than the other ones. Let's see. Let's run this back. Number eight again. Number eight being the lowest is not the best, considering this is number, cylinder number eight is usually the one that, that gets the hottest and goes through the most abuse. Yeah, see, we're a little low. I mean, we're only about mm, 15 PSI low, so it's not that bad, but um, let's throw some oil in one of these 240 cylinders and see if it um, pops right back up. This guy looks like it's a little less. 240-ish. All right, 220, definitely not ideal. All right, that was a 245. About 245 again. All right, so I just put about a teaspoon of oil into cylinder number one here, and we're gonna run the test again and see if it bumps the pressure up to where the one that leaks a lot of oil is sitting at. Yep. So I'm gonna guess that's probably what's going on with the cylinder number six over there. Cause like I said, I'll show you with a boroscope if I can, but there's gonna be a lot of oil sitting inside that guy. So that makes total sense. Um, so the only one that's concerning that, I mean, everything 245, 244, 240, like it's all right in the same, uh, with the exception of, like I said, I'm fairly confident number six over there is only higher because there's lubrication in there. And then, like I said, the only one that concerns me over there a little bit is cylinder number eight. It's run, you know, that's just a tiny bit lower. It's far less than the, the 10 percent di different uh differentiation between you know cylinders so you don't want more than 10 percent difference between cylinders if i remember correctly something like that it might be 20 but either way we're far i mean we're less than 10 psi or we're about 10 psi difference between them so i'm not too worried about it but uh next up we're going to go ahead and do a uh, cylinder leak down test so this is going to be to uh inject some um Get, you know, get the piston in the top dead center, inject a bunch of air pressure, you know, into the, the cylinder and see if it leaks on us, or I should say, see how much it's leaking, because it will leak, of course. Um, and then if it is leaking, detect wear. All right, so now to do the cylinder leak down test, to find, you, we need to find top dead center of the piston uh, and then inject, inject air into it and see where it's leaking, as I said earlier. So to do that, you're gonna rotate uh, the crank down here uh, just stick a, a nut on the harmonic balancer bolt and rotate the engine over manually. And to find top dead center, easiest way I found to do it, stick a zip tie in the, uh, in the cylinder here through the spark plug hole and uh, keep turning the engine over until that couldn't, you know, stops moving all the way out. You know, you want it so it's sticking as far out as it can get. And so essentially turn the engine over while it's going out. And then as soon as it stops going out, that is top dead center. Then once you've done that, Go into the cockpit or go into the inside of the car, put it in gear, pull the emergency brake. That will keep the engine from turning over when you apply air pressure in there. If you don't do that, it can, uh, the air pressure, the pressure inside the cylinder can force the piston to go down and then, you know, it ruins everything. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this guy. Well, looks like we might already be there. Nope, okay. Oh, I got about half, half of that turn. Oh, yep, okay, so about half of that previous turn didn't uh, move it any further, so 
I've actually probably turned it too far, so I'm going to undo it. Undo that part I did before. Okay, there we go. That should be top dead center. So, go inside, put it in gear. So once you got your hose into the engine here, go ahead and take your supply. I have it limited to, my uh, little air compressor over there isn't very accurate. So a little around uh, 100, and 100 PSI, plug this in, and then we're gonna use this to adjust the actual pressure going in. So um, one of these, let's try this. So this is the pressure you're putting in. This is the pressure that's leaking out, or you know, this this will show you uh, your leak out pressure. So we want this to say you know around 70, and you know ideally we want to be 20% uh, less than 20% or 50, less than 15% uh, pressure or less than 15% difference between the two. So that's phenomenal. I mean, we're looking at 70 and 65. So that's a 7% leak down. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, one of the other tricks with the Voodoo here is because it's a flat plane crank, um, it, it might make sense for you to jump around a bit with your cylinder. So if I remember right, um, the next pit, even though once I get this piston to top dead center, it's actually going to be that one that you want to work on because the valves will be open for the exhaust stroke on this one. But I'll, I'll check it. This is just based on accidentally learning this the hard way last time. All right. Just to give you a, a look, because sorry about that, my air compressor came on, but we're at the same thing right about seven. Um, 7%. The one thing I should I should mention that I've learned is the this engine, especially this engine I should say, is very sensitive to, to how where you are with the the piston at top dead center, meaning it has to be truly at top dead center, not the first bit where it stops moving and not past the middle. I know that sounds weird, but like you have to find you have to twist, oh it stopped moving. Then you have to keep going to where it starts moving again and then go halfway between those two. If you don't, your numbers will be different. So uh, for example, the first time I did that, we were at like 62. So I, moved, I went and moved it and double checked again. We got right back up to, you know, 65, 66. So really important for you to do. All right, here we go. Cylinder number three. Look at that, right on the same. Okay, looking good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so we don't have to go one by one by one here because we got eight, so it takes a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and I'll recap after I'm done. <laughs> All right, so as you saw, we had some interesting results. Uh, I, weirdly, the first couple on this side were both at that like seven to 8%, and then the, the remaining six were all at 15 and 14%. So that's pretty interesting. I just retested the first cylinder here just to double check to see if like maybe the engine cooled off more and you know it changed, but nope, um, it looks completely, or it tested the exact same. So the first two uh, tested much better numbers than the rest of them. 15% isn't great. Uh, it's not end of the world though. You know, I was I was directed to send the short block back in when we get to 15%. Uh, so, or uh, sorry, when we get back to, or when we get to 25% uh, leak down test. So, you know, the, the goal with the car is to uh, put it, you know, fix it for this winter and then have a lot of fun in the spring and early summer and then uh, go down again in the middle of the summer when it gets really, really hot. And that's when I plan to cage the car. And you know, if the motor is good and in shape and, and not giving us issues until then, I'll be happy because at that point in time, I probably will pull it out and send it off to NPR Racing and have them, you know, go through it again and, and kind of check things out. But I would love to be able to, you know, just fix those valve seals, throw some timing chains in just for, you know, good insurance and then keep running it until then uh, without issue. And maybe longer, you know, depending on, you know, what happens next year. Maybe I won't be on track as much, but ho hopefully that's not the case, but you never know.